Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you come in wanting stuff. I don't know what you want. I don't know what anybody wants. I don't know what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say that. I get that, you know. Where's the cake? Cake is the language of love. I don't see any cakes in the building. You know, people say that to you in your life and go, I love you, I love you. Yeah? Give me a fucking eclair. <laughs> Nobody, no, we don't need to eat anymore anyway. You know, people in the English speaking nations generally don't. Even the poor. We're all overfed. Eating is a purely recreational thing now. So why fuck around with soup or chicken or any of that stuff? Just pff, cake. <laughs> but before any of that can happen, the couple get a chance to celebrate their, their togetherness in the, in, the, in the new life if they've chosen to, to be together. And one of the big ways people do that is by torturing each other with the English language because it's cheap and available, or indeed any language that they know how to speak. And people will kill you over time. They will shave out every last morsel of fun in you with little harmless sounding phrases that people use every day. Like, be realistic. Can't you just for half a second be realistic? Now what that means is, see reality my way or die. <laughs> Which is why you end up in a warehouse choosing a toilet for the entire weekend. And nobody ever said to anybody, be realistic, let me oil you. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, you know, insulting. It's all sex with you, isn't it? Hey? No, no it's not. No, I resent that. Sometimes I want a snack during. And <laughs> sometimes it is fiendishly clever. Like, why are you in a bad mood? See, that's genius. You have to break that down to understand it. Somebody has said to you, why have you chosen to feel awful, thereby making me aware of you? Because I have no choice in the matter. And why do I continue to live with you? Even though you're so gravely mentally ill. And I don't get any government money. First thing in the morning, when nobody should be speaking. My wife says things like, you look terrible. What? Am I sick? No, no, you just look old and terrible. Morning, morning. That's an awful thing to say to somebody. It's because I care about you. Don't say hello to the children, you'll frighten them. So she's about upstairs. And, <clears throat> But you get to say really good things as well, like, um, you know, the phrases that would just have died out otherwise, like, uh, how dare you? Straight from Victorian theatre. People love talking like that. They feel 12 feet tall. How dare you? <laughs> Running home from work to find the other person and go, where are you? I know you're here, so where are, there you are. How dare you? <laughs> what the fuck do you mean, how dare I? Have you got a ray gun in your pocket or something? Shut up. <laughs> My favorite one is, I know what you're thinking. Oh, do you? Do you really? Well done. I know what you're thinking too. I know what everybody's thinking. They're thinking I'd like to be lying face down in a cushion with my mouth full of chocolate and something lovely happening to my lower half. Do you want your prize now or later? The other thing that we seem to have bought into in a big way is consumerism. That's what people use, to fill the void, you know, stuff. Give me the thing, give me the couch, the wig, the tiny beans, the radio, the CDs, the fucking shoes, all the stuff all the time that you can't get away from. You know you bought a lot of shit because you're broke now and your house is full of shit. You walk around the house looking for a pencil or a piece of paper, you can't find anything useful like that, but you can always put your hands on a purple furry cube with a number six on the side and rubber legs underneath. And you pick it up and you go, what is this shit? Why is it in the house? Because you bought it, that's why. Like all the other crap you never use. There's people in the middle of Sydney driving around in those huge four by four vehicles. They're like little houses on the move. You can't even see the people inside, they're so high up. The men on the mobile phones going blah, blah, blah about money. Or the ladies with the Roman candle of blonde hair going higher, higher, higher as they plow through school children. <laughs> Roaring around, Rawr! up and down the street where your children play and they're fucking Toyota Hiroshima's. so they can get to the mall quicker. 
to buy more shit to put it in the house. The jewelry, the clothes, the perfume. Perfume is a good example of a product gone all wrong. When I was, when I was a child, that was a sort of semi-exotic thing, you know? And it was called something stupid, like fleur de fleur. And you would give it to your mother or an auntie at Christmas. And it was advertised by some dopey looking woman in a field of sunflowers. And she looked like she'd been hit by a tractor because she was going. <laughs> she just couldn't get over how nice she smelled. And now because we're so jaded, we've consumed so much, our attention can only be grabbed in a violent way. So it's always advertised by these constipated exoskeletal bitches who are sneering at you. And it's called something horrible, like homicide. <laughs> dysentery. <laughs> Urban dysentery for boys and girls. <laughs> What's wrong with us? We're the only organism the planet is actively asking to fuck off by burning things and freezing things and melting things on us. It's like going past the ocean and seeing it spit out whales. Fuck off, I've had enough of you. <laughs> Passing the eucalyptus tree as the koalas hang on, the tree's going, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> now you're in the forefront of all that because you've got real weather here, dramatic weather. You open your front door and everything might be gone or you might be two and a half miles further on down the road in a flood. <laughs> In Britain and Ireland, where people talk about the weather all the time, all day, there's no story, there's no weather. But Irish people especially insist on drama. So you'll hear things like, oh, it was fierce, mild. <laughs> it's touch and go there for a while. <laughs> uh, I, live, I live in Scotland. Have you been to Scotland? Yes. See, that's the exact same number of people has answered that question in the affirmative when I ask it in England. And uh, people, English people don't go up there, it's nearly half the country, and they don't go up and you say, why don't you go? And they go, oh, well, you know, it's very dark and dreary. Because <laughs> they get so used to the crocodiles and the tropical storms down there in England, and they... <laughs> dark and dreary, you can't understand the accent, the food's disgusting, a lot of violence, a lot of drugs, people injecting tomazepam into each other's stumps. <laughs> and otherwise I go, you know, and... It's nonsense anyway. It's a beautiful uh, uh, accent in, in Scotland. There's a lot of Scottish people here in this country. You know, you know the voice you've heard before. It's very easy to understand. Um, before, uh, before I was in Australia, I, the last place I was in was in Glasgow. I was in uh, uh, an off-license, buying some cigarettes, blending in with the local women and children. And I, I, uh, <laughs> there was a young man in front of me, very friendly, with a whole case of beer balanced on his stomach. And he turned around to me and he said, um, a gang a gang a hang in hoogie. And I didn't quite know what was an offer, but that doesn't stop you joining in a conversation. You just take out your best middle-class smile, you know, and go, ha 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 ha. He could have been asking me anything, I don't know. It's kind of an abuse of a smile though, really, because smiles are important, they should be used for, you know, when you really mean something, or you feel it very deeply. This is just one of those, please don't kill me, I'm just off a train smile. <laughs> And Scottish people are quite bigoted about the English. You know, I have to remind them of the incredible English sophistication and tolerance and sense of humour, which they need to deal with their impotence and pointlessness. And they... <laughs> there is no point being sensitive about where you're from because it doesn't matter, you know? I mean, Irish people very recently were voted one of the ugliest people in the world. <laughs> that didn't bother me. It just made me look a bit harder at Irish people. I can see what it's about. We're a pretty rugged bunch. All Irish people look like they're trying to hide other people inside them. <laughs> Even newborn babies have that look. Like they've had a serious go at an international rugby career at some point. But to get back to this whole uh, man-woman thing, you know, there's too much made of it because there, there's a gender line completely blurs as you get it, as more time goes by, you know? You both end up as these two grey, dribbling Teletubbies who <laughs> believe in kindness and biscuits and the word of God coming out of the radio. Shh! News! <laughs> oh, they're eating a lot of yogurt in China!
And we, we were still, you know, we were supposed to be this, fulfill these models of, of strong, decisive men and, and very, very feminine, girly women, like the woman in the perfume ad, you know, was shaking her hair, just shaking her hair because it helps her think, helps her decide how she feels about things. <laughs> Staying in on a Saturday night just to shake her hair, being incredibly girly. And, and men being very decisive and saying, we're going over there, we're doing that, and it's going to take ages and we have to build a bridge to get there. Um, <laughs> I've never been one of those guys, you know? So I didn't know if it's the men who fix things and know stuff and go, yes, over there. I never, my wife says things like, the water heater seems to be, and I go, get a man! Get a man, I do not speak pipe or hammer, leave me alone. This is a bag of money and a biscuit tin in the kitchen, give it to some men. Where are you? I'm upstairs in our room, rubbing your expensive creams on my knees. I just want to see what happens. Don't try and get in. I've blocked the door with huge lumps of Turkish delight and I'm listening to show tunes. Stay away. <laughs> I don't mind that, you know. I'm not worried about that. That's natural. You become more feminized with age. I call it channeling Barbara. Something happens to me. I'm walking around the house. I suddenly get this urge to watch a load of Jane Austen adaptations and eat half a box of milk tray. So, oh, him, he's lovely. I've always liked him. Mm, he's really, really lovely. I don't like the other fellow, the hairy one. Do you like him? I don't like him. Oh, look, the lovely one's on a horse. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Um, but, it, but, but what's, what's... Well, we'll have to check the shit. The, uh, what's, what's really odd is what, um, is what gets taken away from you. It's not the stuff you expect, you know? People, people talk about old age and you sort of see twinkly-eyed pictures of, you know, grandmothers and people smiling fondly at children and dogs and wheat fields and so on. Um, they're probably fucking out of their minds. They don't know where they are, but they, that's why they look so serene. But, you know, the weirdest things get taken away from you. Like, I used to have toenails. I remember them. I took pictures. And now I have the sheeting they put on battleships. My family are afraid of me. They make me clip them in the garden. I brought down three seagulls last week. <laughs> eyebrows, I had eyebrows. People used to come from nearby just to touch them. Nowadays I have these fucking things, I get shortwave radio signals on them in the evening. I wake up in the morning, it looks like giant spiders are trying to eat my eyes. Ah! And now you try all the old tricks, you know, because you walk into a crowded room and you suck in your gut and you see the other one underneath. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jeff, you pointless second stomach. You don't need to feed me or anything, I'm a gift from death. Because death is like the dawn saying, send him a message. The other morning, I woke up. I was frightened. I'm always frightened in the morning, I never know where I am. And, but I heard this beautiful, reassuring sound. It sounded like my childhood. I thought, what's that? Is it, there's church bells behind the hill. Or, or no, it's an ice cream van in the rain. It was me, breathing! <laughs>